the new medical school here in El Paso. You put a lot of work, a lot of hours on, on that, and you won the battle. How, how does that make you feel? Awesome. <laughs> it should make every El Paso feel awesome. In my office in the early 90s, we had a group of six or seven of us. One of them was a professor right here at this college. And we were asking questions. How did we go from 104% of the nation's average per capita income to 56%? What happened during that period? The more important question is, how do you fix it? If you're an individual and you've had hard luck, you've had addiction or you've had a death in the family, or there's been a foreclosure, or you've got to make decisions in Juarez, for example, with violence, and you're going to redefine your life. How do you redefine your life? You define it in your highest and best use. What can I, as a person, do to improve myself to become the person that I want to be? Really, it starts with education. All three of you are here because you went and made that choice. I'm going to go get the degree that will make me be all that I can be, right? The same question is for a community. What can we do, what can we change to be the community that we can be? If you have the lowest per capita income, you have the lowest pay scales of large American cities, then you've got to redefine your employment profile around something very different. And in America, in the 90s, that was healthcare. Healthcare workers and healthcare jobs are not going to China. They're going to where the people are. And if you've got 800,000 people in El Paso, Texas, and you don't have a world-class medical center, shame on you. Figure out how you're going to get one. And that was the challenge that came out of this Unite El Paso period of time. It was one of those stars on the mountain we laid out ahead of us. We're going to have a medical center of the Americas. And when I got elected, even before I took office, I'd given 100 speeches on we're going to have a medical center of the Americas in El Paso, Texas, and someday 40,000 people will be working there. They'll be working there in diabetes. They'll be working there in hypertension. They'll be working there in infectious diseases. They'll be working there in the traumatic injuries that our troops are suffering in these wars that have more to do with explosive devices than front line against front line. That's our future, and guess what? It's happening. But the hardest part of that was convincing ourselves that we could do it. So often it's our own attitude that keeps us down. You made a choice to go get a degree in mathematics. You're going to be a math teacher. Why? Because you have talent and aptitude, and I can see it in your eye. You'd say, I don't want that senator in my class because he doesn't know anything about math. <laughs> you made a choice to be in the healthcare field because that's where you want to be in your highest and best use. You can feel it in your heart, that's where you want to go. You change careers. You change careers after being in one part of uh, public service and being in, in the space program, et cetera, and now you've come to the community college. Here's my point. Communities need to do that. And then they need to do it again to go to even a higher and best use in the future. The best thing that happened in the last 10 years in El Paso to redefine ourselves is the Medical Center of the Americas. No question about it. So it makes me feel awesome, but really it should make every El Paso feel awesome. My daughter graduated from an El Paso high school. She went off to an excellent school. That was really the result of her mother being really good with homework. Her dad really wasn't teaching the homework as good as he could have. Um, and she's in medical school now. And because of having a medical school here, I have hope that she will come here to practice. I didn't have that hope 10 years ago because it wasn't possible to do all that she could do with her potential. I can't ask my daughter to come back here if she's not going to reach her potential, right? Your kids made that decision. You've got children. And so to provide that greatest place for our kids, we need to think much, much better, deeper, and stronger about what we can be as a community. Our community exported more 18 to 30-year-olds than any city in the country in the decade of the 90s. That's like sending your gold mm -hmm. over to another place. Sadly, it's like Mexico during the Revolution when all of their talent came to El Paso. Tragedy for Mexico. 
unbelievable opportunity for El Paso. My point is, you can't sit here as a leader and watch your talent move to another city and ask them to come back if you can't answer their question. Dad, where's the job going to be? What am I going to be doing? I want to do something big with my life. If we can't answer that as El Pasoans, and it's not just the senator's job, it's your job and your job and everyone's job, then we haven't done our job as a community. That was the exciting part of what happened in this community in the 90s, is that we changed our attitude. We're going to answer those hard questions. We got a lot of work to do, but we took a giant step forward in answering that question with the Medical Center of the Americas. Thank you for that. I think I'm correct in saying this, Senator, when I, when I read the information and background on that medical center, it's the only one located on the borderlands. It's the only one on the U.S.-Mexico border. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the only one in the country. There's another one in Florida that got started, got up, and failed. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't count. Uh, we will not fail. And um, here's a, another great part of this story. My daughter is now engaged to a second-year medical student at Texas Tech. Wonderful. So, pretty nice story. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 